Bleco has been on the show before. We, it's a search engine, but that doesn't explain what they're doing now. It's called Roxy. And it, it, what they did was find out where all the cool content was on the web and build all these really cool boards that'll help you engage with the web and find new stuff. Uh, we're going to see it right now. Who are you? I'm Mike Markson. I'm co-founder of Bleco. I have been uh, working in Silicon Valley for the last 11 years. This is my third startup. And uh, excited to be here to talk to you about our new product today, Roxy. Yeah, and what is Roxy for people who don't know what yeah. it is? Yeah, so Roxy is a fun, interactive way to, to consume and interact with the news content that matters to you most. So at, at Bleco, we're crawling about 5 billion pages on the web every day. And it makes a great searchable database. We actually categorize the web on, on a category by category basis finding the best sites for each category. So the best 100 health sites, the best 100 finance sites, the best 100 travel sites, on and on and on. If you look at that set of sites, not only are they great for search results, but they also produce new content every day. Yeah. And if you create, take that new content you say, and you look at it and you say, gosh, this looks like a really cool news feed too, because it's not just news, it's news from the best sources on the web on a topical basis. So on Roxy, what we did was we said, we had a hackathon where we had an engineer taking a look at that incremental content and said, gosh, I could really create a really cool news product out of this where we could give not only people all the news of the day, but give them all, this, all the tools to interact with it, do the things that they want to do with it, like comment, submit, share, and all those type of things. And at the same time, create their own sort of personal view of the web while they're doing all this thing. And that, in a nutshell, is what Roxy is. The, the media space is really crowded. It uh, is. I mean, there's... <laughs> You know, not just is there Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus doing social network, which to me is, has not so much about social anymore. They're trying to build news media engines that bring media to you based on who you are, so personalized media. But there's uh, all these new startups, Wavy and uh, Flipboard and sure. Pulse, uh, you know, all sorts of different uh, right. companies that are trying to bring us news that we care about or personalized news or something like that. Yep. We're doing it a little bit differently because I think we bring the power of a search engine behind it. So what we do is we, we have the entire internet on our disks, three copies of it actually. And so what we can do is actually not, is we can actually grab all of the content and sort of create it in this socially compelling environment. And then of course, because it's a search engine, really provide really interesting angles into search by providing uh, through the search mechanism on the boards themselves of Roxy. So. Yeah. So you're taking a whitelist. So, you, you know, you have this trillion pages on the web or yeah. whatever it is. And uh, we all know a good chunk of that is spam and crap. That's, and that's why we're here. Republishing <laughs> uh, and stuff like that, right? Uh, when Google launched, Google is a 25 million page index in 1998. 2012 are well over a trillion pages. And I think if you start adding things up and you start saying, you know, every person on the world is, is on Facebook and Twitter, that's probably about a billion accounts, right? There's probably, you know, uh, 250 top million top level domains, right? There's, you know, uh, Tumblr and Amazon has 21 million products in its catalog. And, and you start adding all these numbers, I mean, you get to somewhere about a billion or two billion, and you say, well, where are the other 998 billion pages coming from? And unfortunately, it's not coming from quality content. It's actually yeah. coming from folks that are trying to get between you. And the, reason, the whole reason they do it is, is because they want to gain the source of traffic, which is today still the search engines. Yeah. And so that's sort of unfortunate the world we live in the web. And that's why Black Oak, as a search engine is here to kind of give users tools to cut through all of that stuff and deliver spam-free search. Yeah. So it, with Roxy, you've built a, a white label. Uh, you've handpicked oh, th this is the 100 sources of tech news that people should be watching because it's the good stuff. That's right. We turn the search engine inside out is one yeah. way to think about it. So those, those 100 health sites that make such a great searchable database with content written by doctors and nurses and medical librarians, they'll answer every one of your medical questions. And, they're, and it's wonderful for that. No spam. But they also produce new content every day. And so what we wanted to do was take it, not make it a searchable database, but turn it inside out and create it into a feed. And that's sort of how we've done it. And yes, because we've already categorized those for purposes of Bleco, it made the job really easy to actually just turn it inside out and make it that same categorized sites a news feed. 
and really create white labeled yeah. news feeds around the best content from the best sites on the web. Yeah, it, it still is uh, not quite real time, right? Uh, you're, you're indexing these things every few minutes and then the page will refresh every, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, every 10 or 20 minutes. So we're, we're, we're moving, the product's six weeks old. So right now uh, it's, it, it will update probably every 10 or 20 minutes as we sort of get further along and go beyond just sort of mainstream traditional news sites and traditional uh, search sites and into things like Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and some of the other ones, then we'll be able to bring some more of that real-time content in and you'll actually be able to see that coming in on a, on a regular basis. I use Twitter search for, for real-time search as well. Um, but, you know, you type in a query term in Twitter search like, you know, San Francisco Giants and, well, sometimes you talk about the game, but sometimes you just get sort of you get a lot of spam. You get a lot of spam. You get a lot of nonsense. Somebody's, yeah. you know, somebody's sort of giving, giving some sort of adjunct reference to San Francisco Giants when I really wanted to know what the score in the fifth inning was. Yeah. So uh, as we bring in more of that real-time stuff, our, our, our goal is to make sure that it is filtered appropriately so that we can avoid the spam, we can avoid the adjunct stuff, and actually give you the stuff that's related to the topic. And we want to make sure we take a thoughtful and careful approach to that. So, you know, the, the great stuff about the, of, of the content that we have in there right now on Roxy is it's, it is well-written stuff from the best sites on the web. So we can actually do a really good job of making sure it's categorized and we can make sure it's, it's delivering you the, the stories that you want to see. The real-time stuff becomes a little trickier, but clearly that's the way we want to, we want to head with it. How many, how many uh, different categories are there in Roxy right yeah, now? Yeah, so we started off the site with 30 categories. Um, so like geekery and sports. Geekery and, and sports and sort of the top level stuff. We wanted to create a manageable site. But with Blacko, we have all of these vertical content categories that sort of sits behind the scenes. So we've just recently added about 600 more of those into the board. So now you can, any team name will have a social news board. You type in a team name, take you to a board. They'll have all the news from, all the, from, from, from the best sites on the web that you can then interact with. You can comment on it, you can share it, you can vote on it, and do all the types of things that users have shown that they actually want to do with the content out on the web. And they do that, uh, and so we do that for 600 boards that are pre-built. Now, next week, what we're here to show you was, is that we're coming out with a, a new feature which will allow a user to create a board about anything they want, and it'll happen in 20 seconds or less. So basically, you'll go to, a, uh, uh, you go to, to, to the site, you click on create a board, if we have, if you type in the name, if we have the board, it'll just take you to the existing board where you can interact with it. And if you think a story's missing, well, heck, you should submit a story. If you think there's stories, you know, uh, you know, needs a comment, make a comment, all that type yeah. of thing. How do you protect against spam? Because it, if I come to your San Francisco Giants page and yeah. it's a cool page, and then I stick something in about the New York Jets, yeah. you're going to be pretty bent about that. Right. How, how does the crowd protect against spam or, we, or we, against we, noise? So it's all vote drip. So similar to other social news sites where actually the users are determining what the top stories are by voting on it. So when you submit something onto the San Francisco Giant page, it doesn't go onto the main page, it goes onto the new page, onto the recent page. Yeah. And so then users, they, our, our users look at that page and then they click and if it gets enough votes, then it migrates its way up to the top of the story and then it'll slowly degrade over time because you don't want to have the same story sitting over there for weeks at a time. So, so you're almost bu building like a dig or a Reddit or a, a slash dot voting engine into it. Right? Into, that's right. So, you know, these are... Listen, we've, we've, we think the lesson we've learned from the last year is that people want to curate. Yeah. You just have to give them the right set of tools, right? And so we think low-touch tools, which is allow them one click to actually express their opinion and actually do, do the community a favor by curating, is sort of the way to go, and that's what we've integrated into Roxy. Yeah. Um, but on the creative board side, it's really interesting, right? Because you can actually type in any topic you want. and So like Half Moon Bay? Half Moon Bay, Rack Space. We can create a board about rack space. We'll go out there, find dedicated feeds on the topic, as well as the best news from the best sites on the web, and put it into a board. And all of a sudden, it'll update every 10 minutes, soon to be real time, and give you all the tools you want to do, like share them, interact with them, comment on them, all in one spot. Brings back. It's, it's in this sort of the state-of-the-art format where people can see the pictures, they can interact with the headlines, and literally it's kind of magic, right? In 20 seconds or less, you can create a board about any, any, any topic that you want, any piece of content that you want, any, any idea that you want, and boom, it'll just magically appear. And so it's really cool. Now, this, is, this is sort of where we differentiate, I think, from some of the other guys, because we have all the web. Yeah. So we can actually create that type of board around anything because we have the entire Yeah, internet. on Twitter and Facebook and Google+, Plus, you can create lists or circles, but only of things that have been put in at Google Plus or Facebook. That's right. You, you don't necessarily have 
all this content that and you've that's found right. all over the place. So we and we sort of have this sort of we sit between sort of pure algorithmic and pure social. So what happens is you create the board, whether it's existing board, and our our algorithms will continue to go out and crawl and grab specific content, which users can then vote up and tell us which is good and bad, and then so. It's always going to be updated from that perspective. But then users also can weigh in by submitting stories. So it's kind of a nice sort of middle ground. We'll never have the empty room where you're going to type in Rackspace and wait for somebody to come in and, 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 and submit a story. The story will exist because we've already crawled it from the web. Interesting. It's really interesting to hear the points of view and, and see how these companies are being built and see just how defensible like Facebook and Twitter are on, on the social side and how they're trying to get to where you are as well because they, they keep adding features that let you add lists of things and searches and stuff like that. That's right. Um, but it's noisy. It, it is it, noisy. And it I'm is surprised noisy. that none of them have really figured out how to do noise control. How are you, so out of the 100 sources that come into the Geekery feed, for instance, how do you filter out because sometimes TechCrunch get you know talks about non-tech stuff even yeah. TechCrunch you know yeah and they talk about something stupid or they put a uh, an advertisement into their feed about TechCrunch disrupt or something that's like right that. and, and again and that's and that's where our users help us out by the curation right so yeah. so if users are interacting with stories the the order changes and if it's some sort of you know this day this day in TechCrunch type of you know you know roll up of their news of the day that doesn't belong as an individual story. Well, that won't get very many votes from our users. And so as a result, it'll just sort of slide its way off the board. So the, the system becomes self-correcting. Our job on the algorithmic side is to sort of provide that sort of base level content that users then can submit on top of and interact with. And that interaction is really what drives the board. Ideally, at some point in the future, we can just turn off the crawlers, right? Because it all becomes user submission. They'll identify everything that they want. And they'll be able to rank things in, in, in the way it is. But even such, as we, as we continue to grow, we want to make sure that the boards have good quality content, and that's what our crawlers are really doing. Yeah. One last thing. Uh, can you do something like uh, New York hotel searches? Or uh, is it appropriate for that? Or Search has to go back to tastemakers, and it has to go back to, to sort of a qualitative approach to search. So you can right now, you can do a search on Bleco, on Bing, or on Google, and you'll get a list of links. But there's no sort of qualitative difference. Maybe there's a star rating or something like that. But really, I'm sort of interested. If I'm going to Half Moon Bay and staying in a hotel, I really want to know from you. Because you know the hotels in Half Moon Bay. Actually, I don't. Oh, uh, you you want to uh, talk to a frequent traveler. Sure, a frequent traveler, Bay. right. Somebody <laughs> that I know that I'm aware of has some sort of inclination. So on Roxy, as you're interacting with us, all this content, you're actually on your, you're creating a user board through your interaction. So what you're doing is you're building up your own digital collection, your own digital library. And because we're driven by a search engine, it becomes entirely searchable. So I can actually find your, your page and say, you know what, Robert? Have you said, I can actually just search you. You're, what's Robert's Webb have to say about New York hotels? What's his favorite? Have you interacted with anything? Have you endorsed any content? And if you have, it becomes immediately searchable. And that's a much more valuable search experience for me as a user, as opposed to some random link from some random algorithm, right? I'm asking an expert. And that's really what we're trying to get to around on the search side. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to watch evolve, because that's, that's the basis of social filtering. You know, if, if if you're uh, wanting to search Twitter for uh, San Francisco Giants, if you only uh, could see the tweets that are touched by or favorited by people who know baseball, that's then right. you're going to get really good tweets. But if you're going to let the masses bring you all the tweets, it's going to be very you're noisy. Be, that, it's, it's, you know, it's the example I use a lot of times you know, you know, with respect to bringing Twitter content, which we'll do, is, is you know, something like a query like Las Vegas Steakhouse. Where should I go to get a steak in Las Vegas? Well, yeah. I can ask a search engine. Or I can ask one of the review sites, which you know has their own sort of problem. Or maybe I should be able to ask Jay Z because he's tweeted out a review, right? And that's and if I can create a digital online collection of content that's endorsed content by Jay Z, asking him by being able to search it. Now I can't. I could tweet him, and he probably wouldn't respond. I'm not Facebook friends with him. I don't have his phone number or his email. But he's probably already spoken by either by by endorsing some content on the web by using some so social interaction tool. If I can bring that into a digital collection for him to make it searchable, it's the next best thing to, to actually talking to him. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Rockzi.com, R-O-C-K-Z-I.com. Very cool. Thanks for coming in and showing Thanks for having me. me.